Hello, everyone. It is Lakidra again, and I'm bringing to you all another word of empowerment and encouragement, people of God. A word that is prophetic of what God has spoken. Thank you all so much for coming on, joining with me. Many of you all that are wondering, my God. Will my land, will my home, will my marriage, will my family ever be healed? As the Lord God tells us in Second Chronicles chapter 7 verses 13 and 14. This is what the Lord God said to Solomon. And he's speaking the same word to you and I precious people of God. I love what the Lord God said. Hallelujah. Started in verse 13. This is what he said. He said, at times I might shut up the heavens so that no rain falls. Then he says, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And so precious standards. The Lord is showing us, yes, there may be hard times. There may be times when you're faced with a crisis. There may be times when look like all hell is breaking loose in your life. There may be times when it seems as though the heavens are shut and there is no rain. Things may look hopeless. Things may look like there is no coming back. Your marriage may be falling apart. Your family, that spouse of yours may be someone you don't even recognize right now. And it looks as though there is no rain. There is dryness everywhere. You're in the wilderness. You're in a dry place. It seems as though God is not hearing. Oh, but he gives us this promise, people of God. The Lord says, when these things come your way, all it takes is a heart of humility. All it takes is that one to just seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, begin to clean up their lives. Follow me. Seek me with all their hearts. The Lord says, I will. I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins. And there is coming a healing in that broken marriage. There is coming a healing in that family. There is coming a healing in that household. Hallelujah. In that broken place. In that life that looks as though there was no hope. As the word of God tells us in James chapter 4, precious standards, it tells us this here, that when there is a humble heart that is submitted in the sight of God, there is always going to be a lifting up. And to be humbled in the sight of God is when someone has decided to follow and obey God. Turn from everything there may be in your life that wasn't pleasing unto God. And even the Holy Spirit may have been tugging at your heart. The Holy Spirit may have been showing you some things who leads and guide into all truth. Obey and precious standards. That's what that word humility means and repentance means to turn in another direction. Begin to draw closer to God. He promised there is coming healing. Get ready people of God for what is coming your way. That suddenly that is about to blow your mind. For remember God cannot lie. It is always a blessing. When we not only hear the word. But be doers of the word. As James also tells us. God will bless us. Who draw unto him. Who submit unto him and resist the devil. There is coming a lifting up. When we begin to say no to the flesh. 
when we begin to humble our hearts, when we come away from the bickering, the fighting, the fussing, whatever that is tempting your mind, people of God, to resist God instead of resisting the devil, flee from it. Begin to turn back to the word of God. Begin to begin to draw to him as the word tells us. He will draw unto us. Hallelujah. When we draw unto him. And I love what the psalmist also tells us. And listen precious standards. There is coming breakthrough in your life. There is coming help from the Lord. As the psalmist also tells us. Oh in Psalms. 119. Verse 173. He says give me a helping hand. For I have chosen to follow your commandments. You see, that is the key. When we decide to follow God, there will always be help from his hand. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you, people of God, God cannot lie. As he tells us in his powerful word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verses 15 through 17, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, even the spirit of truth. And I love how it is translated in the New Living Translation here. In verse 16, he says, and I will ask the father. Jesus said, and he would give you another advocate who would never leave you. And in verse 17, he is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. And this is what we want. We want the leading of the Holy Spirit. As the word tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 17, that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is there is grace. There is peace. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit. The one who would never leave you. Jesus tells us that if we, we love him and obey him. He will pray and ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit. Which is who we need. Where he is there is liberty. There will be healing in your land. There will be breakthrough. That's where the anointing comes in and destroys the yoke. For the Bible tells us so clearly. In Acts chapter 11 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And so you see precious standards. He is the one that causes us to be led. Into doing what is good and pleasing unto the Lord. He brings healing to all that are oppressed of the devil. And it is him who will be with us. It is God who is with us. For the Bible tells us also. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 17. For the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We want the Holy Spirit with us. This is what breaks the yokes. This is what would break the power of the enemy that has been coming in. Seeking whom he can destroy. The Holy Spirit is the one that brings conviction. He is the one that leads into righteousness. And he will convict the world of sin and show them judgment to come. The Holy Spirit, the one who raised Christ from the dead, Jesus says, shall be in us. He shall be in us. And when the Holy Spirit is in us, the Holy Spirit can lead us. The Holy Spirit will bring conviction. Yokes will be broken in your home, in your life, and in your family. There will be healing in marriages. There will be a trans, there will be a transformation. This is what brings forth the blessings. This is what brings forth that oneness. This is what brings forth the manifestation of the word of God. Because remember in the beginning when God spoke, let there be light. It was the Holy Spirit that moved, the Bible says. 
And it was so. It was so. So the Holy Spirit is what makes the word happen. He is the one that makes the word come to pass in our lives. He is the one that brings forth the promises of God. The power of God. Hallelujah. As Isaiah also tells us. In Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 and 2. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He says, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. Remember that's those who are humble. Those who have chosen and who has decided. And who is willing to obey and follow God. Who is ready to, who is ready to hear from him. And turn from, from their wicked ways. Who is ready to receive him. So, when the Holy Spirit is in our life, there is liberty, people of God. There is liberty and freedom from the enemy. As the Lord tells us, the day of vengeance of our Lord God has come to comfort all that mourn. There will be peace. There will be peace that passes all understanding. So this is why we want to humble our humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, meaning obey God. The Holy Spirit will lead and guide us. There will be blessings. Hallelujah. There will be vengeance upon our enemies. He will bring conviction. He will bring liberty to those that are needing freedom. When he comes, there is authority and power from up on high. As the Lord shows us here clearly in Luke chapter 11, verses 20 through 22. He says, but if I am casting out demons by the power of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. For when a strong man like Satan is fully armed and guards his palace, his possessions are safe until someone even stronger attacks and overpowers him and strips him of his weapons and carries off his belongings. And we know people of God that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit Spirit of the Lord is the one who lifts up a standard against him. And so this same Holy Spirit, the one that raised Christ from the dead, who was with him and delivered him from death, who, who raised him up and caused him to overcome death, hell, and the grave, is the one that also strips the enemy of his weapons, overpowers him. And takes all his goods. See that loved one would come out. That unsaved husband would come out. Their minds will be renewed in the mighty name of Jesus. For where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. And when the spirit of the Lord is in us. The kingdom of God is among us. Hallelujah. And it brings liberty and healing in our land. And so to obey God means everything. It unlocks the door. Let us not be deceived, precious people of God. Let us quench not the Holy Spirit. Let us not bring sorrow upon him. Let us not bring sorrows upon him. Let us submit and yield to him. Because when he is with us, there is always blessings. There is always deliverance. Hallelujah, there is coming liberty and life. There is coming blessings and promises. When the Holy Spirit is pleased with us. It was him who was with the Lord. 
when the Holy Spirit is with us, we are able to inherit the earth. We have power over the devil. We, we have power to trample upon serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the devil and nothing shall by any means harm us. Hallelujah. As the word tells us and gives us these prophetic promises in Joel. The Lord tells us in Joel chapter 2 verse 25. He says, I will give back what you lost to the swarming locusts, the hopping locusts. The stripping locusts and the cutting locusts. He says, it was I who sent this great destroying army against you. Here the law was talking to the people of Israel, a nation who had turned away from him. But the law was promising deliverance. The law was promising healing in their land. The law was promising breakthrough that if the people would turn to him, if the people will begin to walk in his ways. If the people will begin fasting and praying again. And following what he had commanded them to do. It, it jumps as we jump down in verse 28. He says this. Then after doing all those things. I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. And your young men will see visions. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on servants, men and women alike. And I will cause wonders in the heavens and on earth. The Lord is saying, I will cause miracles, signs and wonders to come forth in your life, your marriages, your relationships, your finances. I will cause things to turn around. I would cause what the locusts, the canker worms, the caterpillars, and the poma worms of what they have eaten. I would cause your land, the years that they have destroyed, to be healed. Hallelujah. But he shows us how. It's through the pouring out of his spirit upon us that causes the wonders, the signs. That causes the miracles. That brings the healing. My God. It was, it was through the power of the Holy Ghost. That caused our Lord Jesus Christ. To be hung up on the cross. And to rise back up from the dead. That brought forth healing. And restoration. That brought forth deliverance. And power. And spoiled all the powers of the devil. And so when that same power is on the inside of you and I, people of God, there will be wonders in the earth. Hallelujah. As it is in heavenly places. That spouse of yours is coming out. There is coming healing in your land. There is meaning in your household, your family. All of, of what God has promised you. It is when the Holy Spirit is poured out in our lives. Hallelujah. But it, but it happens through our humility and obedience unto God. And that's through, as the psalmist said, Hallelujah. In Psalms 119, verse 173, he says, Give me a helping hand, for I have chosen to follow your commandments. You see, when we love him enough, we'll be willing and obedient. We'll be willing. And obedient unto the Lord. We'll hold on to his word. And hide it in our hearts. That we might not sin against him. We will begin to allow his word. To be a lamp unto our feet. And a light unto our path. We will begin. To acknowledge him in all that we do. So that he will lead and guide and direct our path. And as we begin to hear the word. And not hear it only. But be doers of the word. The Lord will bless us for doing it. And so when, when we have decided. To turn away from. What we have been doing. Draw close to God. Begin to. Walk in love. Walk in forgiveness. And I know precious standards. It's not easy. When you're hurting. But it is a joyful thing. To serve and obey God. You'll find there will be strength and grace. 
You'll find that if you have a willing heart and say, Lord, yes, I turn away and now I'm willing to follow you. You'll find that you will be given the grace and the power to do it. For the Holy Spirit is the one that will lead us to do good. He is the power at work in us who causes us to do the things that are pleasing unto God and to do the things that are godly. And by us living a sanctified life, it will cause holiness. It will cause goodness. It will cause healing. And the power of God to rest in your life, to rest upon your household. And the Holy Spirit, as the Lord tells us, as the Lord tells us in John chapter 16, verses 7 through 11, he says, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the Holy Spirit won't come. And if I do go away, then I will send him to you. And this was the Lord promising the disciples at the time about the coming Holy Spirit. After he had died and rose back from the dead, how he will send him. And so he says, and when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin. You see, without the Holy Spirit, there won't be any conviction. There won't be any conviction and any sense of wanting to repent and turn to God. Because it is him that brings conviction. It is him through your life while he's in you that will also bring conviction to that unsaved spouse. And win them over by leading you into righteousness. It is through our righteous living and reverence unto God. It wins over the unbeliever because that power is at work in you. When you can love the unlovable, when you can love the one that has hurt you over and over, when you are steadfast and unmovable and always abounding in the work of the Lord, you have these signs and wonders following your life, that spouse of yours would take notice that you are not the same. That they are witnessing God. And this always brings convictions. And shows the world righteousness. And the coming judgment. As the Lord says. And when he comes. He will convict the world of its sins. And of God's righteousness. See, he'll show, show God's righteousness. And to be righteous is to do what's right. The Bible tells us precious standards. And it says, and he also will convict the world of the coming judgment. It is him that has to show them how true God's word is. We, we can talk to someone until we are blue in the face. But without the power of the Holy Spirit. Revealing that word of truth. Opening up the eyes of, of that one's understanding. Then, then our words, the letters, they are dead. They will be unfruitful. But when the Holy Spirit is there speaking, He does the conviction. He shows forth righteousness. He turns the heart. He removes the heart of stone and causes it to become tender. He does the washing with the word. Hallelujah. He empowers. He breaks the yokes and the chains. And so what am I saying, precious standards? I am saying that when you have turned and humbled yourself unto God, get ready. The best is yet to come. It's a guarantee your land, your home, your marriage will be healed. You will see the manifestations of God in your life. Trouble don't last always. The Lord God is taking vengeance on your enemy. This battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. And so we want to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Yielded to him completely. There are coming more and more breakthroughs. Turnarounds. Miracles and marriages. Deliverances in spouses who are away from God. Children are being saved. Delivered and set free. This is what God wants. Hallelujah. As the Lord tells us, where the heart of the father is turned back to his children and the children's heart are turned back to the fathers or to their parents. 
He says, or else I will strike the land with a curse. And so God is for galling his being in the homes. Not strife. Not wickedness. But holiness and righteousness. He says that all of these things will come forth through the word of the prophet who would turn the hearts of men back to God. And so all this is done through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Through his revealing and revelation as he comes and pour out these truths upon our lives. Even the hardest of hearts. The darkest, the darkest minds. For who else but the Holy Spirit is stronger than the devil? My God, I'm telling you, there are coming breakthroughs, people of God. There is coming more and more mighty things in your life. And the Lord also tells us, I love it in Mark 11, one of my favorite verses. Verse 24, Jesus says, you can pray and ask of anything. And when you pray, believe you've received it. And it will be yours. And the Holy Spirit causes us to believe. Once we've heard the word. And he causes us to receive it. He shows us that it is truth. So that it will be ours. For the natural mind cannot understand the things that are of the spirit. For it is foolishness unto him. The Bible tells us. But those who have the mind of Christ. Those who have the mind of the spirit. Know all those things that are freely given unto us. And that spouse is coming out precious standards because of you. For the sanctified husband or wife sanctifies their husband and their wife. Hallelujah. Breakthrough is coming. I'm telling you people of God, get ready. The best is yet to come. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Yes, that spouse may look like there is no hope. Oh, but through the power of the living God, drunkenness is leaving that spouse of yours. Whatever addictions there may be, whatever sexual immorality there may be, whatever rebellion there may be, whatever stubbornness there may be, whatever brokenness there may be. Oh, my God, my Lord, my Savior, your Lord and your Savior says vengeance is mine. He is Opening up the doors of the prisons. The day of vengeance has come. As long as you continue doing what God has called you to do. People of God. Those that love him and obey him. He will never withhold nothing back from those that love him. and Walk uprightly before him. Let us not let the enemy. Cause us to walk in rebellion. Because it hinders the blessings. But as long as we do what is right, God's face and his ears is always turned to our prayers. He hears the prayers of the righteous. There is much power in the prayers of the righteous. It availeth much. And God cannot lie. He says you can pray for anything. And if you believe you've received it, it will be yours. And the Bible tells us that we who, who obey him. And does what is pleasing unto him. We know that he hears us when we pray. And if we know that he hears us when we pray. We know that he will give us whatsoever we ask of him. That spouse is coming out because of you people of God. And this is what Paul the Apostle even talks about. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 16. He says don't you realize wife. That that husband may be saved because of you. And don't you realize husband. Christian husband, that that wife of yours who is away from God may be saved because of you. Well, why? Because the prayers of the righteous are valid much. It was because of Abraham praying and interceding on the behalf of Lot. God saved them and delivered him. And it was because of Noah. God saved him and his house. When the whole world drowned. But this one man who was righteous, who was a friend of God, who believed in God, who trusted God. His family was saved because of him. And he was able to declare and decree a thing, and it was established. God has no respect of persons. He says, you who are called by my name, if you humble yourself, repent and turn from your wicked ways. That's all repentance means. 
drawing closer to God, begin to follow him now wholeheartedly. He says, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive your sins and I will heal your land. That's his promise. Heal your land, meaning everything that concerns you, your marriage. Hallelujah. So we see that it is because of us. It's because of us. Our, our loved ones will be blessed. Oh my God. It's because of our pure hands. We who are the priests and kings that are called by God's holy name. Oh, hallelujah. That are walking after him. His image and likeness. Oh my God. Goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that's one thing the psalmist was able to remind God about. He says, I need your help in hand, Lord. I have followed your commands. You see, they all knew. The men and the women of God knew the importance of obeying God. Even Hannah was able to conceive a son when she humbled herself. When she began to turn to God, God opened up her womb. My God, hallelujah. When she submitted to God, God supernaturally opened up Hannah's womb that the Lord had shut. And as the Lord told Solomon, yes, there may be times where the heavens will be shut and there is no rain. And yes, I, I, I have sent the locusts. I have allowed things to come your way. But if you would turn back to me, I'll heal your land. God is still saying that same thing, people of God. And, and, if, and if we who say we have never sinned, we all have lied and the truth is not in us. We are liars and the truth is not in us. But those who confess their faults, confess their sins, God is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. His word also tells us. And so being humble, people of God, is the key. I'm telling you, get ready for your breakthrough. Get ready for that suddenly phone call. Get ready for that thing that God has promised to do in your life that you have been waiting for. Don't get weary and well-doing. You will reap that harvest if you faint not. That spouse is coming out because of you. The Holy Spirit wants to lead and guide us. Into all truth. And I'm so thankful for what God has been doing in my life. The healing. The reconciliation. The restoring. Oh, and yes. It's, it's, a, it's a day by day process. Oh yes. It takes. Following and trusting God. But he always keeps his promises. I'm so thankful precious standards. For many of you all that have been standing. Hanging in there. Not giving up. It is such a blessing. Your family is going to thank you in the end. Hallelujah. God is about to bring forth glory in your life. I'm just so thankful for what God has been doing in my life. And even there have been some testifying about how the word of God has been healing their hearts personally. While they're waiting for restoration and reconciliation in their marriages. And like I've always shared, the healing starts within you first. And the peace and the reconciliation between you and God, it starts with you first. And then God begins to slowly invite that spouse of yours to come and be a part of it all. Hallelujah, because he, he shows off his glory. He's going to be ready to show off his glory through you. And so get ready, people of God. Those of you that are submitted unto him, the best is yet to come. The blessings of the Lord that make it rich, he has no sorrow to it. Is yet to come. And we all know that the Trinity is hard for our minds to understand. The Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But the Bible tells us that the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There are three ways they function. And so when you are led by the Spirit, you are led by God. And the Lord is that Spirit that dwells on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Thank you all so much for coming on, joining with me. Hallelujah. God loves you. Praise His holy name. And so, Father, thank you so much for all that have come on. 
Thank you that you're bringing healing to their land. Thank you you're bringing healing into their homes, oh God. Marriages, families, salvation is coming forth. Stone and stubborn hearts are being turned away. The locusts, the canker worms, the caterpillars, and the poma worms are being taken away, God. Thank you for pouring out your spirit. Bringing forth healing and deliverance. Setting the captives free. Opening up the prison doors. Opening up the prison doors. Thank you, Lord God, for the power of the Holy Ghost. And we rebuke the works of the devil as long as you be for us. What can stand against us? Thank you for healing our homes, our marriages, and bringing forth reconciliation and restoration as you have promised to do, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing the broken hearts. Even if there has been a divorce, oh God, for nothing is too hard for you, Lord God. You are able, Lord, to still bring restoration and healing, Lord God. You are still able. To make them one. Praise your name. Thank you Lord Jesus. For your precious blood. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Who will be with us. And lead us and guide us into all truth. And who will never leave us. We give you the praise. And for that one that is hurting right now Father. Lord may your word bring forth healing. Lord may there be peace in their minds. And understanding. And faith and trust in you. May they believe they've received what they've asked for. And there be unity and love in their marriages. As a husband. Oh God is called to leave father and mother. And be joined unto his wife. And they too be united into one flesh. Thank you for the healing. In that union. Thank you for the healing in that marriage. Thank you for the salvation. In that family. We praise you and thank you for your grace. And we love you and adore you. We worship you and give you the praise. Thank you, Lord God, for deliverance. And all the people of God that are joining with me now, we all say yes to your name. Yes and amen, oh God. We receive it all. Lord, I stand in agreement with each and every one. In Jesus' holy name that are joining here in this prayer. We praise you in advance. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise him, people of God. Thank him for what is coming your way. That is his promise. Remember, he will never leave us. Nor will he forsake us. God loves you. He has great and mighty things that are coming your way. Get ready. The best is yet to come. And until next time, remember God loves you and I love you too. Bye-bye.